In February 1863, the Army of Northern Virginia was camped in its winter quarters. Soldiers suffered through the monotony of their winter schedules, the cold, and disease. As soldiers tried to find ways to pass the time, they sang and talked by the fire, wrote letters home, and played card games, but were looking for anything to break the tedium. So one cold day, with harsh winds and nearly eight inches of snow, Colonel Rutherford of the 3rd South Carolina gathered his men for a rather unexpected occasion. Bugles and drums sounded as South Carolinians marched to the field of battle, assuming defensive positions on a hill and forming into a line to await the enemy. In this case, however, the enemy were not actually the Yankees, but fellow Confederates, Cobb's Georgian Brigades, who had fought with the Carolinians at Fredericksburg previously. And this battle would be far less deadly, as behind the Carolinian lines, instead of the artillery readying cannonballs, the soldiers were making pyramids of snow. One of the largest snowball fights in history was about to take place. The Georgians soon emerged from their camps and closed in on the Carolinians. Officer David Augustus Dickert of the 3rd South Carolina dramatically remembered the events of the snowball fight. When the Georgians were within 100 feet, the order was given to fire. Then shower after shower of the fleecy balls filled the air. David Augustus Dickert, 3rd South Carolina. As the soldiers let loose their balls of ice and snow and fought for the honor of their states, the snowball fight became a snowball battle. The rebel yell rang out, officers yelled orders at their men, and at one point, a Carolinian who became too close to the Georgian lines was taken prisoner of war. As he was dragged away, Georgians covered the man with snow, thrown coldly under his clothes. Hold still! Take your medicine! Now, more regiments joined in, and soon a large portion of the Army of Northern Virginia. One soldier remembered the components that made up the battle that day. Head-on assaults and flanking attacks, authentic generals and colors, signal corps, fifers and drummers beating the long roll, couriers and even cavalry. Officer Dickert later remembered the conclusion of the snowball battle. After 15 minutes struggle, our lines gave way. The earth, or rather the snow, all around was filled with men who had fallen or been overtaken. And now in the last throes of a desperate snow battle. As the Carolinians began to rout, Dickert noticed a wild-eyed Georgian chasing him. The terrified officer ran at full speed. Go back! The idea of a boy, 17 years old, and never yet tipped a beam at 100, in the grasp of that monster, as he now began to look at me, gave me the horrors. One by one, the man began to pass me. While the distance between us and the camp grew less at each step, yet the distance between me and my pursuer grew less as we proceeded in our mad race. Finally, Dickert made it back to his tent. As he fell heaving, he heard the giant Georgian outside remark, I would have rather caught that damn little captain than to have killed the biggest man in the Yankee army. General Lee and General Stonewall Jackson were said to have witnessed the action that day, with Lee even being hit by a few snowballs. Jackson, on the other hand, was not going to take any of that kind of tomfoolery. When that cold day in the Rappahannock Valley was over, it was estimated that nine or 10,000 Confederates had taken part in the icy struggle, nearly one man from every regiment in the Army of Northern Virginia. A true snowball battle for the ages. You have heard their voices and a fun story, but now we must remember the somber truth. Three more years of brutal conflict, including some of the bloodiest battles of the war, followed that winter of 1862-3. to three. And while our friend Dickert survived the fighting, thousands of the men who participated in the snowball battle, 
including Colonel Rutherford, who started it, would soon rest under the sod. In the seasons following that winter, all of the lively young men and boys would have to once again go off to real warfare, and the men of North and South would have to exchange their hands and mittens for rifles, fighting with deadly lead and not with snow. <laughs>